And welcome to In Game Chat Saturday, July 18th, 2020. It is season 14, episode 21. I am Scott. And I'm RJ. That is all for today. It's the way it is. Clap, clap. Uh, yeah. Uh, 14, 21. Full on episode 609. Welcome to the show, everybody. If you'd like to get in touch with us, our phone number is 334-2729-228. 334-2729-228. Go to uh, our website, ingamechat.net, for all the links to get in touch with us. We've got a lot of which none of you use. I think some of those may not even work anymore. I don't think, I have to I don't, check on that. Yeah, I don't think Google Plus is a thing. Mm. I'm not sure if it's even still there or listed. I don't know. It's a lot of stuff that's come and gone. <laughs> You can find us on Twitter. That has not left. We are still there. In-game chat. Find us on Facebook, In-game chat. You uh, can email us, everyone, at ingamechat.net. We're streaming right now. Go to twitch.tv and type in uh, in-game chat in the search bar. You will find us, or just go to our website and click the link, and you'll be able to find us there. Easy way. Watch us live out while we broadcast. And... Uh, Join us in the chat room there. <laughs> I see AC Wraith this first thing. It says, I await the two-hour podcast describing Henry Cavill building a gaming PC. It is not something that we are going to skip over. Um, I hear the ladies liked it. Some of the men liked it too, man. <laughs> um, got the dude's arms, just massive arms. Um... But yeah, no, it was, it's so fine. I, I see Wraith just threw that out there. We might as well throw it out there and talk about that. Yeah. Okay. So Henry Cavill on his Instagram, he uploaded about a five minute video, I think, mm -hmm. um, of him building a PC. And like, I knew the dude was into games and I, specifically PC gaming. Um, I knew he was very much into PC gaming. Um, I can't remember what it is. I want to say it's Warhammer or, um, well, I think it's League of Legends. I think it's Warhammer. But um, I knew he painted miniatures. Mm -hmm. um, and dude's a big nerd. Mm -hmm. um, like, big, big nerd. But, yeah, he, uh, he, you know, he pushed for, he pushed for the, not only for The Witcher to get made into a show, but also to push for that role as well, just because of how familiar he was not only with, mainly with the books, but also with the games that came from it. Yeah. So, you know, I was not surprised seeing that he was building his PC just for the fact that it was, um, cause I figured I was like, yeah, he probably builds his own PC. I, I have no doubt in my mind that the PCs that he's ever, that he's always had or builds that he's done. Um, so none of that surprised me. I was actually excited to see that because I'm like, oh yeah, hey man, there you go. Do your do, build, yeah, build a PC. Mm -hmm. um, because I can tell you, in the last couple of weeks, the PC build bug has been biting me as well. What you about due? It's been about, about a year. I probably year I've actually been overdue. <laughs> it's about a year and a half when you start looking for parts and things like that for your system, upgrading and things. I mean, I haven't built a PC since 2012. Mm. The PC that I kept lugging up here, mm -hmm. built in 2012. That's my mm -hmm. gaming rig. Yeah. So the only things that have been switched out of there. Now, I have added hard drives. You know, I've added, like, you know, space 
Yeah. I've added that. So I've added hard drives to it and uh, solid state drives and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the only two components that have changed out is the power supply because my Corsair died on me. Yeah. And I can't remember what it was, but there's a, there's a picture of my, there's a picture of my, my, the whole setup. Um, I need to find that. Let me, let me find that real quick. Uh, so I can put that in the, um, I want to put that in the chat room there. I want to put a link to it in the chat room. But, uh, so you can see what my build was in 2012. Right. The only things, like I said, the only things that have changed is the power supply and the graphics card. Mm -hmm. The graphics card was changed out in 2015. Mm -hmm. So it's been eight years since I've built the PC and five years since I've changed out the graphics card okay. that is in it. So, yeah, AC Wraith, I've been a PC gamer for decades. I have yet to build my own system. I'm fine replacing a video, car video card or something, but I've never dived into CPUs and power sources. Man, it's a, it's a fun little thing. Um, seeing, what compo seeing what works with what. You know, yeah, I mean, it's like putting that. together a puzzle, but it's putting together a puzzle that, that gives you a result in the end. Like, mm -hmm. you... Yeah. I mean, I don't know how I don't know how AC Ruth has done it, and and honestly, I've never built a I've never bought a pre built PC. The yeah, last one, I, that's one I did was a gateway but when that I, started, I can remember. Yeah. I can't remember it. Like I'm sure my, f I I don't think my father built his PCs way back when. Mm -hmm. Um, the only thing I can remember about those was like it was a forty four eighty six DX forty. I don't know what that is, but that goes way back yeah. into the nineties and stuff. Three eighty. It's a three. This was an upgrade. The other one was a three eighty six mm -hmm. DX something. Uh, this is a four eighty six DX forty, yeah. and I was, and I and I didn't you know. But he didn't build it. You know, mm -hmm. he went to some place and bought the yeah. PC. And I guess you can still do that now. I really haven't. I've never. I mean, I know you can do it online, but I've never. I've never walked into a store like a Best Buy or you know, when Circuit City was around. Mm -hmm. um, Probably Walmart or Target or something like maybe that. Maybe even then. I've never walked in with there. But it, 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 as far as Best Buy is concerned, I've never walked into the Best Buy and, and, and gone and looked for pre-built machines. Sure, laptops galore, mm -hmm. you know. Um but I've never walked in there and looked over at pre-built. There's, there's, I've always gone to the component section, found the cases and the fans and the, you know, the graphics cards and all that stuff. But I've never looked at any kind of like, here's a machine that's already built for you. I have no idea if they have them. I figure they, they must. They probably do. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Anyway, I know you can get them online. Yeah. I've never bought one, though, <clears throat> uh, that is pre-built to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. The uh, first one that I remember putting together for myself... Uh, James and Jeremy and I think Matt were involved and they were kind of like looking over my parts list. I was like, you get this, you can get this, you can get this, this. And they helped me do this. And this is going way back in 2000. And was this before PC Part Picker? Yes. Okay, yeah. This was going way back to 2005, yeah, I yeah, think. Okay. 2004, 2005, whenever, mm -hmm. I, whenever I built my first. Yeah. And, or whenever. And they, when it all came in, they came over and they built it, you know. Mm -hmm. They all they sit there and they put it together and I, I was watching it and I was like oh good I got a PC now yay yeah. it works um, yeah before that that there was our PC part picking mm -hmm. the people who are experienced at this uh, getting the knowledge from them before putting that one together for yourself yeah and then I wanted to build one uh, then I needed an upgrade and I wanted to build one build my own and um, and I can't remember really what prompted it what was the game that I wanted to play or what was the what was what was the thing I was looking forward to in 2012. Hmm. that I was just, you know, ready to play. And I, I really have no idea what that was. Hmm. Um, no clue. Yeah. If I do, the the box for it is still at the house. Um, but I don't remember what it was. So I did, you know, in, in 2012, I don't know that I used PC. No, I did. I did use PC Part Picker for that. Okay. Um, in fact, I'd post the list, but I in in making this new build, I accidentally overwrote it. Oh, when okay. I saved it, and I hate that because mm -hmm. it showed everything that I bought. Now I have a picture here. Uh, if I can go to dismiss, I have a picture here that I, if I go to it, I can show you, and it show. Come on now. I just uploaded this the other day. What's it sorting by? Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's like it's got to be right here. Um, open image of a new tab. 
copy this, copy and paste. Putting this in the chat room for people to go look. Uh, and there it is. Um, the, yeah, I can't wait. there we go. The processor I currently have uh, is an i7-3770K. Um, and man, that thing honestly could still go. It could still go. Mm. It's still doing fine. It's still the same processor that's in my machine. And it's perfectly fine. I have no problem with it. The thing is still running fine. 16 gigs of RAM, which, uh, which are four four gig sticks. Which is ridiculous now that I think about it, <clears throat> but because um, <laughs> now I'm looking at two 16 gig sticks mm-hmm. to make a 32 gig RAM machine. Um, but you know, yeah, I wish I could tell you, man. Um, because in 2012, I wasn't thinking to play a Mass Effect three, or Far Cry three, or Halo four, or AC three on my PC. I was going to be playing those on console. Diablo 3, obviously, but I'm almost positive I didn't build a machine because Diablo 3 was coming. Mm. You know? I I can't figure out what it would have been. This was in October of 2012. So, there's my case. There's a picture of it, the case, and I still have the case, and I'm keeping the case. There's no reason reason for me to dump that. I'm keeping the power supply. There's no reason for me to dump that. Um... The cooling system, I'm not sure. The cooling system, the, the, the cooling thing that I have for the, uh, and you can see it over there, the uh, Cooler Master, what is that, TPC-812, I yeah, think. On the left side, yeah. Yeah, way over there. Um, that thing still is fine, and maybe it'll do. I haven't looked up what, you know, I haven't really looked up what I might need for something like that. I don't, I don't think it's fine. And plus, the, the, I think it's fine, plus the stock cooler that comes with the processor probably would be fine, too, so. Yeah, no, I didn't build a PC for Torchlight 2 either, Lethal Mike. <laughs> um, there's my SSD. It's yeah. a, it was a... Samsung? Yeah, Samsung Solid State. It's an 830 series. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's like 250 gigs. It's not a big deal. I was mainly using that for my operating system. Yeah. I was going to put that's that... Usually, yeah, that's usually what I, I, hear, I keep hearing about the Solid State for your mm-hmm. operating system. It doesn't have to be big because it's just going to be OS stuff. Nothing really going to put right, which is why place. that's that's what I was doing. I was like, I really want my operating system because I knew I wasn't going to be putting a lot of games. Of course, now that was back when that was back when solid state drives were going for a pretty penny. Um, the 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 memory to price ratio mm-hmm. was way off. You were paying a lot of money for a little bit of memory on an SSD. Mm. Changed. That's a lot of that has changed, mm. especially if you're looking at the um, the SATA stuff. Uh, which is what that is. Um, no, I mean, I don't know, dude. You'd have to throw... I don't know what it was. I do not know what it was that uh, that I wanted to play. Um, I have no clue. I, I can't... I have, no, I have no idea. It was in October of 2012 that I built this. I don't know what was coming out. I don't know what the, the game was that I wanted to play that this thing was going to be running. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, I do know why I upgraded in 2015 for my card. Mm-hmm. And that was for, that was for Arkham Knight. Wow. That was for Arkham Knight and Witcher three, I think, which was coming out not too long after that. Hmm. Uh, or may have came out just earlier than that prior to that. I can't remember, but um, yeah, I upgraded to a 980 Ti. That is a that's a six eighty, and that was a big deal back in two thousand and twelve. Uh, an MSI Lightning G four six eighty man, that was a big deal back in the day. Um, but uh, but yeah. So anyway, the bug has bit me again, um, and I'll tell you that it's bit me for a couple of reasons. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator that comes out in August. Yep. Will I have it built by then? I don't know. Probably not. Um, the bigger, the big one, of course, Cyberpunk twenty seven seven. Of course, you know, in November, mm-hmm. that's uh, that's one of the big ones there. Mm-hmm. So, plus, from what I understand, reading reading up on things, uh, this thing is gonna 
the video that I render and all this stuff, and it's going to speed that up. It takes about two hours now to render the video. Mm-hmm. Two hours, two hours, 15, something like that. Apparently, that's supposed to speed up. We'll see. But, uh, and here's hoping. But, okay. um, but yeah, so. Uh, yeah, the only time I had yeah. with building computers was for myself, and then I started building one for my parents. And then uh, building again, because it was about eight years since I built my last one. So the one I got now, it's probably going to be a nice long while before I do any more uh, PC building. Most likely upgrades or anything like that. First thing it would probably do is space, because you know I am about space. I like having more space, the better. Thing is, I don't know, put it on a serial ATA or, I mean, I'm sorry, a, a spindle or um, solid state. Um, this is just for storage, really. It's probably going to be best for spindle, really. Yeah, that picture that uh, the picture there of that power supply, Professional Series Gold AX850 from Corsair. Yeah. Corsair, that thing died on me. How long did it take for, you, for that to happen? Um, not, actually not very long. If I built that in 2012, I think I had it up until about 2014. It did not last Dang. long. Yeah, it two didn't years. Last long. It did not last long before it died on yeah. me. So I went with an EG, yeah, I went with an EV, blah, EVGA, mm-hmm. uh, one thousand watt, yeah, thing. And so and I'm covered I think, there. I think in all the time, in all the pieces I've built uh, for myself and or for my folks, uh, I maybe had a power supply die maybe once. Mm-hmm. It's not a rare. It's not a. Doesn't happen to to me. It didn't happen too much to me. Either. Yeah, I'm not getting new hard drives. I've got all my hard drives. I've got all my solid state drives. So I don't need that. I basically need um, a motherboard, RAM, mm-hmm. and a graphics card. Uh, maybe a cooler of some sort. I don't yeah. know. Um, I think that one that I got, that Cooler Master, um, it was a pain to get on there. But when it finally fit, everything clicked together. Mm-hmm. It works pretty good. You just have to work with it. Yeah, I mean, I may I may stick with that since I'm basically popping out my entire board, my mm-hmm. motherboard. Mm-hmm. I may just be like, well, out with the old, in with the new, because I got to replace the RAM on the. I got to replace the motherboard itself. Got to replace the RAM on the motherboard. Got to replace the processor on the motherboard. Got to and and then so why not the cooler on the motherboard? Just go with something. Yeah, get something new. I don't know. We'll see. I haven't looked into it. I have the stock cooler mm-hmm. that comes with the processor, and I haven't really. Read up on that if the stock is fine. The stock should have been fine on my i7 because I never. I, it's a K series, and so is the K series on the on the AMD CPU that I'm getting, but uh, which means overclocking, basically. And I never did a lick of that. Mm. I never touched overclocking, um, and I don't know that I ever will. Uh, although, nice to have the option there if I decide to try. Yeah, you know. Um. Reading the chat room. I will upgrade. Uh, this is Lethal Migraine. I will upgrade the CPU and the AMD when the AMD 4000s come out. Right. That's due maybe in the fall sometime, I think. Um, there's there's rumor of that. Plus, there's rumor of the new NVIDIA cards coming out um, as well in the fall. You got an X5, you got a 570X or an X570 motherboard. Yep. Uh, that is, I'm looking at an X570 for the motherboard. Um, Although there's, I think the X650 is due up in in the fall, which would be another step of future proofing, sort of. Hmm. I don't know. So uh, it's really, it's kind of really weird to to it, it, if you can see in the picture there. Um, I have all my stuff there, and I was ready to build. This build is a slow build. This build is a, hey, is that price really good right now? I should snap it up. Yeah. Because that's what I did with my new CPU. I picked up an AMD uh, Ryzen 7 3700K, I think is what it is. Or is it, am I, am I, hang on. Mm-hmm. What did they get? So you just went piece by piece. I'm doing it piecemeal. Yeah. Very much doing it piecemeal. Yeah, same as um, me, just uh box first and get the pieces as they go stack them up and when they get all together just start putting it putting it, getting it together and ready to go uh yeah my whole my whole point of that was like i i really was just kind of i've i'd started doing my research on things and like well, yeah. what's what's the deal here what do you want to go with 
And then earlier this week, um, the, uh, what's their names? Uh, Newegg was having a deal, was having mm-hmm. a sale. There was like a week long sale. And yeah, the Ryzen 7 3700X, which is regularly like 330 bucks, was on sale for 250 it comes with a free copy of Assassin's Creed Valhalla for PC. Oh, okay. Um, and I just, I saw that and, you know, I sent a link over to James. I was like, look at this. Look, I'm already looking and here's, here's something that's very hard to pass up. It's a really good deal on, on, on the processor. And uh, he's like, yeah, that's pretty, he said, that's, that's really, really good. And that, you know. And and looking up reviews, it's like, ah, you don't really need the 38. Uh, the difference between the 37 and the 38 is negligible. Um, the 39 is really overkill, uh, unless you've got the money to just kind of burn in that regard. Go ahead and burn it. This right. is a good, you know, this is a decent, uh, decent processor to get you through for a pretty good while. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I'm going to go another eight years again mm-hmm. on something, but, um, but yeah, so... Uh, I'm keeping the case. Uh, Lethal Migraine uh, is showing a case that he got, and I'm looking. I'm looking here. Yeah, I know that white one. It's got. He got the H510 from NZXT. It's. Um, I've looked at that one, or at least I've looked at some similar models of that one. The thing I like of the most about these more recent cases, or at least the ones that I keep looking at, they have this power supply bay on the bottom that kind of makes it it kind of like the uh, power supply's down there we don't don't want to see that okay I'm looking at it it's got like it's own section yeah it's like we don't want to see that the power supply's down there we don't have to worry about that okay Um, and I really like I just love the and the wires won't get in the way of everything else if it's down there by itself yeah no look at it I mean I just love the, the the simplicity to it just the like here it is white box on one side um, and I guess it's, uh, was it glass on the other? Uh, is that glass on that side, I guess? Um, he'd have to tell me. But I'm guessing one side is solid white, the other side is, is glass, maybe? Well, like we can see inside of it. Inside yeah. Of yeah, yeah, tempered glass is what he says. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good looking case for a PC. Um, I'm not too sure I like the whole all white type thing, but, uh, but that's fine. That's fine. Um, mine, you know, if you look at, if you look up the one that's in that picture, the Corsair, oh man, you can't say, it's the Corsair 650D. Mm -hmm. Um, let me see if I can find images of that. Um, he says, as he's, as it gets, uh, there you go. Okay, um, it's all right. For the time, it's what I it's what I wanted, and I think it's going to suit me well in the future. Um, when I built this, I didn't plan on lugging it around <laughs> like I eventually ended up doing. Yep. But you know, it's good. It's got a, got a, got a lot of good places for wire management. That sort of thing, which I've done. Um, you can, yeah, that was key for me in the latest build. Yeah. I had, cause my build before that wires were everywhere and there's a lot of space for fans and, and things like that. So no, it's, it's served me well, uh, when I got it and I don't remember when, well, I got it in 2012. See some of those parts that you're seeing on my table there. Some of those came from new eggs. Some of those came from Amazon. Some of those came from Best Buy. Um, so yeah, uh, remember exactly where some of that stuff came from but yeah my stuff was all over the place uh let's get this phone call real quick hi you're on in-game chat who's this this is chris hey man what's going on uh enjoying more of the last of us too all right good hoping to finish it up real soon so i can get in the ghost like uh rj has he said mm-hmm. he's only he's only tapped the surface there yep. <laughs> but yeah the part i'm i'm enjoying now i'm there's a, it's a uh, area is flooded where you know where you can swim underneath you know and you know bottom them out and you know hide from the enemies mm-hmm. and you know at the stealth thing you know I just love 
taking them out, and then, and then our bodies drop right into the water where, you know, nobody else sees them. So I, I'm loving that aspect of the game where I'm at. You don't have to worry about hiding the bodies? Nope, you don't have to worry about it. You know, as long mm. as nobody's watching, you know, oh, there's a perfect opportunity. Or you either snipe them with a bow and arrow or swim underneath and grab them from behind or, or you know, whatever, and then their bodies are underneath the water and, and, and uh, nobody sees them unless, you know, they happen to be nearby and see, you know, are in the eyesight of them. So hmm. I'm having fun going through that and enjoying that. Hmm. I'll be looking forward to that then. Yeah, that's it's real fun. So mm-hmm. I'm, I know our, uh, Scott will, you know, when he gets to that part as well, you know, he'll enjoy that too because I'm mm-hmm. like him, you know, I like the little sneaky things where you can sneak and, you know, nobody they ever know you're never there. Yep. I miss my sneaky games. <laughs> I ain't well, had a lot of them, but I miss my sneaky games. Well, there's some parts up in the in the game coming up that you can enjoy that, that are down the road. Well, we appreciate the call, man. Always good to hear from you. All right. Well, y'all have a good afternoon. Take stay, care. Stay cool, y'all. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, it's nasty outside right now as far as that. Um, yeah, yeah it, it leads to my great. AMD CPUs like fast RAM. I was just, I was on Newegg because I'm there. I hate, God. PC shopping is the most fun, but it is the most uh, annoying thing yeah. to do. You buy a part, and then you buy a part piecemeal, and then about a couple months later, a better deal comes by. That's the basics. That's the basics. Is just finding a deal that is like, ooh, this is the one to jump on. It's like trying to play the stock market or something. Yeah. Um, So I'm looking here, and I was, yeah. So it's just that's just me scrolling through, looking at different things. Something will catch my eye. I'll look at that and think, ooh, what is this? Blah, blah, blah. Look at this. There's a nice little can. Or was that a, what is that? Oh, that's a built PC. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, I could, I could sit all day, all day looking at this stuff. I should go to PC Part Picker uh, and do that. Yeah, he says I got 16 gigs of 3600. I do want to get 16 gigs more though. I thought I thought they went higher than 36 now. I thought they went up to Oh, we'll see that's DDR3. That's DDR. See the the stuff I bought was DDR3 way back when. DDR4 is now like the the common thing. Um, and I have no idea what the speed was on those, uh, the Corsair Vengeance LP stuff that I had. I don't know. Man, it's always fun. It is so much fun to shop for PCs. Um, parts. Parts, yes. And put them together and everything else. So, you know, I'll get around to the build when I get around to it. It's not... That's the best part is that my computer still runs... I am not buying this out of a necessity that I have a failing computer, you know, mm-hmm. that I'm running into kind of issues or bottlenecks or anything like that. Things running fine for the amount of gaming that I'm doing on it right now. Thing is running perfect. You know, mm-hmm. obviously Destiny doesn't eat up a lot of, a lot of uh, memory, but of course, you know, there's other games that are available now, and there's other games that are that are coming. So obviously, by buying the CPU, I got a free copy of Assassin's Creed mm-hmm. that I'll be playing on PC. Um, Cyberpunk is another one. Um. I don't know. There's plenty. Plenty for me to, to, to look through and to, to mess around with. So, Yeah, um, the bug did bite me, but that was before the whole Henry Cavill thing came up and he was building his PC. But it was nice to see him building it. And he, he, he apparently he's an AMD fan. Um, or I guess. I don't know. He, he, I don't know if he's a fan, but that's what he got. He got an AMD processor. Um, got an AMD processor. He got a... 280 Ti, I think, was the... I got a really top-of-the-line graphics card. Mm. Massive, massive, beefy graphics card. That'll last them a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, best I can tell, I got 32 gigs of RAM, but I don't know. Mm. Couldn't see in the thing. Never went over that, so... Would have been nice if he had posted, like, here's my rig. Yeah. You know, here's all, the, here's all the stuff I'd used. Mm-hmm. But it was interesting, because a lot of the stuff, like, in the video was, like, blurred out. Like, brand names were blurred out on his Instagram. Oh, yeah. Um, and so uh, you can still tell what it was because mm-hmm. <laughs> he, he blurred the name, but I mean, that's clearly an AMD box. That's clearly, uh, uh, an, uh, an Asus, uh, the motherboard, 
Yeah. Uh, just from the logo. The logo, yeah. Um, you know, you could see the the. Yeah, if you know, you know. You, you yeah, see, yeah. look at the bottom. Well, the, the whole label says two eighty Ti on it. It didn't have to say. It didn't have to block out the the brand name. Mm-hmm. But you could tell what it was. Um, so yeah, it's interesting to watch him put that in there. And he he put in a he put in a water cool system. Yeah, sort of. Uh, one of those closed loop mm-hmm. uh, systems in there. Which was a an in in x in k x t or whatever n z x t n z x t uh three thousand or something I don't remember what it was. Did you ever try a water cooler? Not in any capacity whatsoever. Want to? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Too nervous. Did, yeah, yeah, I'm about to say you yeah, probably have the same mentality. They, you know, I I mean, they've come up. Look, in 2012, they still had those. Yeah. In 2012, they had water coolers. Uh, mm-hmm. at the the closed loop water cool liquid cooling system. And that was something that I considered Mm -hmm. because they had the ones that light up and I was, I was, I was being stupid with my build. Mm -hmm. I was like, I want lights. I got to, you know, I want, I got fans got to have a light in them stuff like that. I, I, I pulled back on some of that stuff. Um, like I wanted to show it off, but ain't nobody ever going to look at my system. Um, that's the other thing other than me Mm -hmm. and I don't care. Does it work? And did I overpay? <laughs> let's make sure. <laughs> let's make sure one of those is yes, and the other one is no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then one of those, then the ones that matter. Yeah. Yes, it does work. No, I didn't overpay because mm-hmm. I don't need the fancy lights. Although almost everything comes with some sort of RGB yeah. um, system built into the thing. Yeah. So, I think of the water cooling. Like I was saying in my case, I think it was I just I keep having this thing in my, thought in my head, one leak. And all the electrical yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, I get it. I know, I know, they, I know they're good. A lot of people say they're secure and everything. And yeah, no, like you're, you're still, perfectly fine. But still, though, it's always, it's always lingering back there. Uh, yeah, see, I'm not really... I've, I've looked at overclocking. I've been told, like, overclocking is really easy. How are you going to do? And I'll go online and I'll Google on how to do it. And um, all the instructional videos are telling me that, hey, this is a really easy thing. This is a simple thing to do. Mm-hmm. Here, watch how I do this. Blah, blah, blah. You do this. And then I go and look at it on my system and the BIOS and everything else. And I'm looking at it. I was like, yeah, I could do this and I could do that and that sort of thing. But yeah, I don't really want to fool with it. The, you know, the closer I get to the point of actually doing it, mm-hmm. change my mind. I was like, no, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. Um, I think it is perfectly safe. But, uh, yeah, so I didn't go with the water cooling on my old build. I am not going with the water cooling on, my, on this build. Um, it's, t- <laughs> I say that now, and I might. But I think, like Lethal Migraine was telling me, he's like, man, the stock fan that comes with the thing is perfectly fine. Mm. Um, I'm like, good, you know. So more than likely what I'll do is I will get a motherboard at some point. Get my RAM at some point, and then I'll go ahead and switch everything out and just move my graphics card that's currently in my system and put it in this new one and go from there and then wait until the graphics cards come out because the one I've got still is doing me fine. Mm -hmm. It's still not running into any kind of problems. And NVIDIA, both NVIDIA and AMD are both releasing uh, new cards apparently this fall. Mm -hmm. In fact, NVIDIA already stopped production on their current series. Of cards, okay. uh, they halted production, and that everybody was like, "Oh, okay, the three thousand series is coming, mm-hmm. probably in the fall." So, uh, yeah. So that's uh, that's a uh, thirty minutes on talking about building a PC. Um, what I would love to do, um, it doesn't translate. Like, so we've done different things here. You know, we had the collectors thing where people bring in things. We've talked to, we've had shows that are nothing but composers. Um, We've done plenty of different things on the show and experimented and tried different things. We did the D&D game. Yeah. Translated well to radio if you have somebody who can describe and talk and everything else. Yeah. I'd love to build the PC on the show. Mm-hmm. I don't know that that translates well to radio. No. No, you got to Probably have some visuals. doesn't. No, you got to have some visuals with it. Well, I mean, we would. Yeah. Because we'd be streaming. Yeah. But at the same time... Um, I don't know. See, that's the thing. I don't know that it would translate as well to uh, to be in to be an, an audio thing. You know, mm-hmm. I don't think it would outside outside of that uh, outside of that nerve wracking crunch when you put the 
memory stick, memory sticks on the motherboard. Yeah, there's a lot of nerve wracking moments in there. <laughs> there's a lot of one of the things of watching Henry Cavill. He had the he had the camera mounted on his head. Yeah. So that you know you got a view of what he was seeing, and like he puts in the he puts in the chip. Um, and apparently, and I don't know how he did this. I'm not. I could. I can't see from the video, but he put it in upside down. He put it in the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Um, and he put it down there, and then you see him pick it up and turn it around. I was like, "There's an air, there's a thing. You'd line it up with the other thing, and that's how you'd put yeah. it in. Come on, man. Yeah, I mean, th- those things. <clears throat> those things will let you know. Uh, let you know when you're putting something in wrong or backwards or it's not in the right spot. They, they got something that'll let you know. It, like it won't work. You know, yeah. you do have to apply force, but you can tell when it's like, mm, that's not. That's yeah, that's not, not it. it. That's not it. Yeah. But like the 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 whole. The whole uh, the processor thing. There's a there's a notch on the motherboard mm-hmm. that's supposed to line up to a notch that's on the processor itself. Yep. Bloop. Match them. You're good. Yep. But yeah. So when he did that and he put the thing in there and then he closed the lid on the thing, closed it down and he did this thing with his fingers after he got done. He's like, okay, you know, <laughs> just like just like you got done. Like okay, all right, good. Mm-hmm. There we go. You know, just like ooh, tough parts over with. Yeah. No. I mean, you know, the first tough part is over with. Yeah, there you go. Uh, there's a couple of tough parts that come afterwards, and they're, uh, they're only tough for the fact that it's like, let's make sure this connects, let's make sure this does, because you're all working towards the post. And mm-hmm. the post is when you first hit that button, turn it on, and you hear that beep, mm-hmm. you know, and it passes through. That, that's, when it hit, that's when it's posted, and you're good, and it runs, and you're fine. Mm-hmm. So. Then you have the fun part of making your programs work together. Yeah, no. Then it comes. Then comes all the. I remember on my twelve build, I did all this tweaking stuff that I found online. It's like, here's what you need to do to get the most efficiency out of your SSD. Mm-hmm. Uh, remove the Windows splash screen. Tell that thing not to show up at all. You got to go through here and do this. Blah blah blah. Do this. Uh, tell it to bypass this. Turn, to put this switch on. Turn this switch off. Turn this switch on. Turn this switch off. Uh, on all these different setting things. I'm gonna have now, to get you with done, you on that, by the way. Huh? I'm gonna have to get with you on that, by the way. Okay. I don't remember where it was. Uh, I'll have to look. But it was like, do all this stuff and then then restart. And from restart, from pressing the button to getting to the Windows login screen, uh, which I don't even need, but uh, to to the Windows screen, I guess, eight seconds. Nice. I mean, boop. Yeah. Now, you have to understand, I know eight seconds might sound not very long. Uh, and it's not in the scheme of things, but honestly, when you count eight seconds, it's like okay, it's it's, it's not considerable amount of time. Mm-mm. It's that's fast, yeah. But it's not like what you would think, like as a snap of the fingers type thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not it's not instant, mm-hmm. but it's it's really good. Um, so yeah. Anyway, we need to we need to go. Uh, we've talked way too long on this, and I missed a break. So. Uh, when we come back, we will talk about what we played because we haven't even gotten into that. We're going to talk about Ubisoft's doing their, their thing last week on Sunday, which was a massive disappointment for me, but I'll tell you about that. And you know why it was. You know why it was. We talked about it before, but we'll talk about it again. Uh, this first track that we've got here is from a game called Last Oasis. I want to say Spigot was playing it on Steam. Brock? Mm-hmm. Was playing on Steam. May not have been him. It may have been somebody else. May have been Leak on. But uh, they were playing Lost Oasis. This is a track called Wood Punk. We'll be back with more in game chat right after this. When it keys up.
And welcome back to In Game Chat. Scott along with RJ here. We don't have much time because we've spent way too long on that first segment. What have you played, RJ? Um, let's see. More oh, by best... the way, Paper Mario music. Oh, okay. The new Paper Mario came out on Friday. Paper Mario Origami King mm-hmm. is the title theme for that. And mm-hmm. that's what they we're listening to. Go ahead. Sorry okay. to interrupt. Mostly, uh, mostly Fantasy Star Online 2. I'm doing, more, but doing a lot of item management right now. Because I've built up a lot of uh, stuff that i got to move out and uh, get situated. So I've been doing that mostly. Uh, a little bit of uh, Soul Calibur 6 on Steam. Because a friend of mine, uh, shout out to Trey, who bought it for me half a month ago. And I just now looked at it because yeah. I don't go on Steam, but like once every other month. See, when so I was I looking for music. Yeah. See, when I was looking for music, I go, when I, when I can't find anything, I go over to my friends list and see what people are playing. And mm-hmm. then if there's nothing there, I go into the activity to see what people bought or the achievements they made in certain games to see mm-hmm. if I've used music. Yeah. And lo and behold, there's RJ with Soul Calibur on his, on his list. And I was like, oh, why is he buying Soul Calibur? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. It didn't say that. See, it didn't say you were gifted. Yeah, it says now own yeah. something, and yeah. I was like, "What? Well, okay, I'll yeah. ask him that tomorrow." Yeah, I was gifted that in the season pass. So uh, again, thanks to Trey for doing that. We uh, we we had a little uh, get together on PS4, and there was a connection issue or something like that. So we wanted to try it on a PC and Steam, see if that worked any better. So we're gonna experiment, and see what that works or not. And uh, outside of that, uh, it was a uh, Ghost of Tsushima. I played a little bit of that when it came out uh, this past uh, Friday. I only got the tip. I only got the. I'm only scratching the surface on that. Like I said earlier. Yeah, I'm gonna log, let me the, log uh, into. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm log into my PlayStation account here. Mm-hmm. I want to see if uh, Matt's playing that right now. Okay, but go ahead. But yeah, I was uh, like I said. I've got through the uh, got through the first part. Got through the tutorials and everything with the sword battles and things like that. And I've just started on the story mode uh, where you look at the map and see all the places you need to go. The tales and legends and things like that, uh, places you can go to earn your earn your uh, skills and abilities and things of that nature. Um, I put it on a, I had to put it on the the initial uh, Japanese dialogue with English subtitles, and it, it immediately made me think of the, uh, if you remember the Saturday afternoon kung fu theater on uh, WCOV local TV back in the day, <laughs> or the uh, <laughs> the English uh, English uh, English uh, dubbed uh, kung fu flicks from the seventies. Yeah, yeah. How the mouths don't match up anyway clearly the, to the uh, words coming out. Um, yeah, he is yeah. currently playing Ghost of Tsushima. Mm-hmm. Ghost of Tsushima. 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 Whatever. It's a, it's he's a playing, side dish. He's playing Ghost. Okay. Tsushima. Uh, that's what he's playing right now. Mm-hmm. Did you, Matt? Did you lug your entire rig to Georgia? Probably, because you said you weren't going to be here. I've done it plenty now, of times. And now I caught you. I caught you. Playing the games, which is what we talk about, and that's what you should be doing anyway. So, it's fine. Make it sound like you should call out a cheating spouse. Right? <laughs> Told me you were going to be doing something else. Ah, I see you doing something. <laughs> but you didn't tell me. Mm-hmm. No, nah, it's fine. Yeah. But yeah, I was we like, don't pay him to be here, so it's not like he's, it's not like he, he can show up if you want to or not. That was the first thing you were going to ask him to explain yourself, huh? No, not at all. I'll ask him, hey, how was the game, you know? Okay. Mm-hmm. Or he'll he'll probably likely tell me, oh, I end up not going. Okay. You know, that sort of thing. Last minute ended up not going. That's whatever. So. Okay. It's fine. I don't care. It's fine. Okay. It's fine. He can do what he wants. I don't care. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, okay. I'm just, well, okay. I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm just doing the whole, yeah, I'm just doing the whole thing there. <laughs> should send him a message <laughs> go ahead go ahead keep talking all right yeah i'm having fun with the, with the gameplay and everything like that but there's little things that uh that i've noticed in the first part like uh i don't think the game told me how to duck or crouch or sneak it told me how to uh, uh vault into open doors or climb up uh climb up uh, ladders and things like that but to sneak around i don't think it prompted me to uh hit the uh hit a uh, R3 or whatever to uh, crouch or run or whatever. I don't think it showed me that at all. I just lucked into it, actually, mm. for that first time. Um, there's also something I didn't know, didn't see as well, and I looked at the uh, instructions, of, I looked at the uh, button layout, yeah. I didn't see anything to lock on. I didn't see a lock on option. There is there, no lock on option. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, because there was plenty of times when I had more than more than uh, more than two folks coming at me. I remember I I was reading through I was reading through my news feed stuff and mm-hmm. I I saw a headline about it that says here's the reason that uh, ghosts of 
Tsushima. Tsushima. Say it with me. Doesn't Su- allow you to lock on to yeah. enemies. Say it with me. Su. Su. She. She. Ma. Ma. There you go. Tsushima. Right. So, uh, if there's no lock on, okay, that explains everything. Because, yeah, there were times when I was uh, at multiple enemies, and I'm, like, wanting to hit a certain person, namely the one closest to me, and um, either, like, whiff or hit something else uh, completely that I didn't want to. So that's a little, that was a little frustrating. So I got so to get used to the combat system a little, little more than that. Man, this is Dark Souls, where I have, the, where I have all the uh, access of locking on and switching to what I want to anytime I wanted to. So it's just something to get used to, and I'll get used to it over time. You just got to keep playing that and uh, see where it goes from there. But like I said, I've only scratched the surface of it. I'm going to give more time to it throughout the week and uh, see, where I, see how it goes from there. Um... I'm looking for it now because now it's now it's gonna bug me. What's that? Trying to find out that the thing that it says mm-hmm. about uh, locking about on. locking on. Yeah. yeah. Um. Man. Now I can't find it. Hmm. Here's where you be. Uh, here's why Ghost of Sh- Tsushima doesn't have lock on for combat. Okay. And this is a GameStop thing, so it's going to play a stupid video. Mm. Has no lock-on mechanic encouraging players to remain in the middle of a fight as opposed to keeping all enemies in front of them so as to keep an eye on all possible threats. In an interview with their narrative director, I asked him why Sucker Punch chose to not include a lock-on mechanic. Okay. He says, well, working, uh, well, working on the combat, we watch samurai films, which are, of course, an inspiration for the feeling of this game. The fighters in those movies will often have to switch their attention very fluidly from one incoming foe to another. So the combat is built around dealing with a variety of enemies, a group of them. Uh, Though you'll face other foes, you'll primarily fight against Mongols. Uh, We tried to give it a feeling of being like a wolf pack that would surround you. And only through skill could you fend them off as they came at you from all sides. If we had a lock on, you wouldn't have been able to move as quickly between the different opponents as they came in at you. Hmm. Fox likens Ghosts of Tsushima's uh, combat to a dance where you weave between swords as they move through space. Uh, Had they incorporated a lock-on mechanic, uh, Fox says it would have been more difficult for players to improvise and respond to numerous simultaneous threats. As is, the combat asks you to attack, block, parry, and dodge. The lack of a lock-on mechanic means you don't have to consider it when enemies are surrounding you. Well, the first part they said was, uh, so you you try to focus on getting everyone in front of you, right? (laughs) Uh, and, that, yeah. and that's pretty much what I've been doing in this whole thing. I've always circling around till I see all the enemies in front of me. That's what I've been normally doing anyway. If I see more than if I see two, heck, two, two or more people, I'm, I'm getting do they not try? Do they not try and flank and get behind you? Uh, they do move, circle around, but I circle along with them, right? Getting, getting Trying out to keep there. them I'm in front. Keep yeah. them in front of me, regardless. No, that's so, a yeah. valid tactic. I would imagine that yeah, works. I would imagine that's so, a yeah. valid tactic. So, uh, so yeah, so just have to adapt. What else? Off with it. what else? What uh, else? No, that's just as it. Uh, PSO2, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, and uh, and Soul Calibur Six. Cool. Yeah, I've been playing. Um, I've been playing two games, Destiny being one of them, mm-hmm. and uh, Animal Crossing being the other. Mm-hmm. So, um, build that island up a little more. The island is coming along, man. Yeah, my mm-hmm. my my resident services area, mm-hmm. which used to be this um, tent. You know, is now a full-on building, mm-hmm. like you know, brick build- and and the dirt pad that the tent was sitting on now mm-hmm. is now this paved court square like thing, with mm-hmm. whatever you know. And I got a shop that opened up, and so that's where I can go to sell some some goods. Um, I got people moving in. Had to go build houses for the new people moving in. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what else? What else is going on? Uh, let's see. Oh, um, yeah, I visited, well, I already talked about visiting um, Brianna and got, and she's like, here, take all the stuff. Mm-hmm. Gave me a bunch of stuff to start with. Yeah. Which was thankful because on Sunday, you get visited by this, <laughs> this, <laughs> this um, she's a, she's a, she's a, I'm trying to remember the animal that she represents. And it's like a boar, but she doesn't look like a boar. She's got the pig snout. Mm-hmm. Right, and there's a little little drippy thing of, I guess, snot hanging out of the pig snout, mm-hmm. and she's she sells turnips. Mm-hmm. Turnips apparently is the way you make money in in Animal Crossing. 
Um, and it's something called the Stalk Market. Mm-hmm. Um, so every Sunday, this girl shows up to your island. Once, you, once you've gotten to a certain point in the game, every mm-hmm. Sunday she shows up to your island. She's there from, I think, 8 a.m. until noon. And so from 8 a.m. until noon, you have that much time to buy the turnips from her, however many you want to buy. You buy those, and then Monday through Saturday, twice a day, the, uh, the store that's in your town will accept certain prices for those turnips. And so you go in before noon, and they say, hey, we're, we're buying turnips for such and such, you know, mm-hmm. over how much. And if it's less, obviously, than what you paid for it, and you're like, eh, I'll wait. Yeah. And then at noon, the price changes. You go in, you see, how, where, is it, where does it sit? Mm-hmm. So, for instance, last Sunday, I bought a buttload of them. And I'm talking a buttload. Triple digits? Well, they come in stacks of 100. Oh, okay. Well, actually, they come in, I think they come in stacks of 10, but then you can stack those mm-hmm. into 100. Yeah. And so I must have bought, I mean, I spent probably a million dollars mm-hmm. of whatever the in-game currency, in-game currency is yeah. uh, to buy these turnips. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of wait for your prices to go up. Well, talking with Brianna again, she was like, well, here's, here's how me and Jason do it, uh, her husband. Which, by the way, I'm talking about... Um, I don't know if you remember this, uh, Sadie Aiko and Annie Aiko, who used to be from uh, Colony of Gamers way back mm-hmm. when. I went up to Pennsylvania, married them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm good friends. In the suit? Huh? In the Star Wars thing or the regular? No, no, no. Star Wars was here. Okay, all right. Star And Star Wars just a renewal of vows that took okay, place, okay. you know, back in Prattle. Mm-hmm. Um, this was up in Pennsylvania and where they live. And... Uh, and yeah, I, I did their I did their marriage and stuff. So mm-hmm. good friends with them, fantastic. And so yeah, we've kept in touch. And she's like, oh, you have Animal Crossing. She's been helping me out. Mm-hmm. She's like, yeah, I play the stock market on this. So what you do is you go to this website called Turnip Exchange, and you go to Turnip Exchange, and there's people posting like, hey, my guys are buying them for this much money. My guys are buying them for this much money. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you get put into a queue and you wait your turn because the island can only hold ever how many visitors per island. You wait your turn, and then you get an invite. You go and you sell your turnips. So I sold two batches this week, one for six hundred and forty per ten, mm-hmm. and I only paid one hundred and ten per ten. Yeah. Um, I can I sold. I I spent maybe a million, but I made back four million. Mm-hmm. So profit. Yes. Good. And then tomorrow she's coming back to sell more turnips. I've got more money to buy this time. Uh, so I'll be buying some more turnips. Either rinse, repeat. Yeah, and go. then you just do this thing all over again until you build up your 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 wealth, um, mm-hmm. which doesn't necessarily help you too much. It helps you with some things, but there are some things that you just have to craft yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, there are things that you're just like, you know what? I gotta like, what was I doing? Um, I had to build a bridge, and the bridge had to come from stuff that I had to resources that I had to do myself. Mm-hmm. I couldn't go to the store, in-game store and buy the wood needed to build the bridge. Yeah. I had to go and chop trees because that you, they, they don't sell just the wood. You had to go, so I went and I chopped mm-hmm. trees and collected wood. Um, there's other things. Like, you have a museum in, on the island, and that's for, like, when you catch a new breed or a new type of fish or a new bug or you find fossils and, you know, you're building up the dinosaur skeletons and stuff like that or, or anything. The ones that are brand new to you, you go and you donate them to the museum. Anything else, you can either keep and put them in your home, give them to somebody else, sell them off, whatever the case. But uh, So that is something that I can't buy those things. I just have to go around and, and collect those things. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. There's still stuff you do. Having a bunch of money doesn't mean it makes the game easier for you. Mm-hmm. It helps you in paying off your debts. Like, now I'm at the point where if I want to build a bridge to connect lands... I first had to create it. Now if I want to get that put in, I have to pay to have it done. Mm-hmm. I have to pay the city, or the, I say the city, whatever, the, the construction crew to come in and build the bridge or to build an incline or to make changes to the layout of the land or something like that. Mm-hmm. If I want to get an, uh, an, an added thing onto my home, like a new room, which comes with more storage space, I have to pay for that. You know, when I first got my little tiny house, it was like 98,000 bells, and I finally got that paid off. And then I wanted to upgrade a room, and it was like a hundred and something bells, and I got that paid off. And then I wanted to up, I upgraded a room again, and it was like five hundred thousand. 
I got that paid off. I, today I said, hey, put an addition onto the house, and it's like 700000 to pay off. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it just keeps rising. So the money helps in that regard. It doesn't mean that I'm going to get, that I have some type of advantage over somebody else. I, it does in some small ways, but, I mean, it's not a race, and it's not a multiplayer game. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not, yeah. it's, this is just a sim where you kind of, I say a sim, it's just a, it's a little, little neighborhood Sounds like island. Neighbor, neighborhood building sim. Neighborhood building, yeah. yeah. It's really all it is. Um, we're way over time. Hey, we got to go. Uh, this is from a game called Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town. It's new, at least on, on Switch, and it's, again, it's like you inherit a farm and you have to do farming. It's, 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 there's not much to it. Basically, it's living a life type sum is what it is. I don't know. Anyway, that's what that is. We'll come back right after this with more in-game chat in just a moment. Welcome back to In Game Chat. Music here from Ghost of Tsushima. I did it right. I guess it's the main theme. Slow build, by the way, for the main theme. Mm-hmm. I don't know when I'll get around to playing that. It's a single player game. There's no multiplayer component that I'm aware of. You know, I'm aware of either. Yeah, it'll it'll drop in price. You know, and I'll pick it up at some other point. There's no point yeah. in me getting it now. I look at a lot of those like. Yeah, because I, 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 what was it? Um, Star Wars, the Jedi thing. Mm-hmm. That's single player. Yeah, we talked about there are some games you get day one, you mm-hmm. know, because it's your personal preference or whatever. Yeah. But sometimes you just sit back and wait on, and yeah. eventually it'll drop down in price to something uh, tolerable, and you'll yeah. take it. Yeah. Um, I feel like I get a lot out of that game as far as time that I would put into it if I put into mm-hmm. the time, whatever I would, you know, I'd get, a, I'd get my money's worth. Yeah. But I just don't see myself playing it right now. Kind of like if you didn't get a chance to play uh, a Sekiro, you know, it was like thirty. It was like thirty dollars I saw it sometimes. Yeah, but that's like, like a, that's like that's like Samurai Death Souls. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, There's, there, I've seen some rage. There's videos. another reason I I've haven't seen some picked rage that up. That, yeah. <laughs> and and being that I'm waiting for a price to go down is not one of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah especially that uh, that dude that drops it off the kite. It's challenging. Mm-hmm. Uh, welcome back to the show. We've gotten way off on time here, so this segment might be short, but uh, we'll see. Uh, first, let's uh, take a look into the chat room here and say hello to AC Wraith, another TV viewer, A10, I think is the name. Casket Sharp. There's your boy. Favorite name in the entire thing. Uh, Commander Root, Denu, Duke Frukum. Electrical Longboard? That's new. Mm-hmm. Uh, ETY37459, that's also new. Lethal Migraine's there. Lurks. Retrode is also there. And Yan- y- Yandir Girlfriend? Let me see. Yan- Yandir Girlfriend? Yandere. Yandere Girlfriend. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what that's from. 
But uh, that seems also new as it's well. It's an anime thing. Oh, it's anime. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, welcome to the chat room. Welcome to the show, everybody. Speaking of talking about Destiny there, um, one, th- you know, I, I sit here and think, so prior to the news that we just recently got, I was kind of like, hey, I got to get stuff done for Destiny. Mm-hmm. Expansion's coming out in September. And I've only got a amount of time to get a bunch of these little triumphs and things. Plus, we're losing like three planet, four planets. Mm. I need to like let's go through, let's get some stuff done because these things are going away after September. Is EO one of them? Huh? Planets going away? Oh, I always called it IO. EO, I don't know. It's just IO. Is okay. the, I always called it IO. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, I always called it I. Well, it's IO, Titan, Mars, and Mercury mm-hmm. going going away. Yeah. I was like, I like Titan. I, IO, you call it? Yeah. Or EO. If you yeah, want to call it EO, we can. Uh, nothing, to me, nothing ever happened out there. It was like maybe one or two, maybe. Um, to be honest with you, nothing ever happened on any of them. Hmm. With the exception of Mars. Mars, I think, was a good... The, Mars could have stayed around, I think. Mm-hmm. It was really, I, I don't want to say it was relatively new. It wasn't. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was newer. Mars and Mercury both were newer than the two others, Titan mm. and Io. But Mercury is too small and has very little to offer. Mm. Um, Mars is bigger and has more things to do, uh, event, event protocol, whatever it's called. Mm. Um, escalation protocol is what it's called. The little on-planet event thing that you could do. Um, but yeah, those things are going away. There's a lot to do. And then, of course, we get the announcement that uh, the whole... Brand new expansion pack or expansion thing has been pushed way back to well, unfortunately, November. Do you compete with uh, Cyberpunk? To compete with literally everything, Cyberpunk, Assassin's Creed, whatever else is coming out around November time, mm. you know, that we don't know about yet yeah. because we got an Xbox, we got an Xbox presentation thing coming up on the twenty third of this week mm-hmm. that will tell us about more games and likely have more release dates on when those things are coming out. So. There's a lot happening um, around that November mark, and I'm not happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really not happy about it. So, yeah, they push, back, uh, they push back new Destiny stuff. So now, now, I have this massive amount of time to get things done, you know. Not as much of a rush. Does that slow me down? Not really. Still out there kind of eh, kind of grinding. But you think about it, I mean talking specifically to people who play destiny now because to try and go into the explanation of what i'm trying to say here uh, would be ridiculous but um mostly when you play a season that lasts about three months or so Mm -hmm. um you usually can hit the season level the season cap of 100 levels and then continue to increase from there um this this is just gonna this is gonna extend a whole bunch of people (laughs) They're going to bring their power level so high um, because it's just going to keep going for months and months and months. They don't have, and they've already said that, yeah, we're going to extend the, the moments of triumph thing, which is like this thing that everybody had to get do, had to get done before the expansion hit, has now been extended all the way into November. They haven't added anything new to it. Still same achievements that you got to do. And so those are just going to come with time just playing the game. Now, I mean, they were going to come with time anyway, but now they're – they're easily going to be done. Mm-hmm. I don't ever see myself in a position where it's like, oops, I didn't do this one thing. I need to go back and do it. Because there's just tons of time to be to be dealt with now. So, yeah, that got pushed back. So uh, Last Sunday we had the, um, the Ubisoft showcase thing where it was a pre-recorded video and you got to watch uh, Watch Dogs Legion was shown off. And... Uh, something called, what is it called? Hyperspace? Hyper, hyper, yeah, Hyperscape. Mm -hmm. The Hyperscape, um, open beta. I didn't, I don't know. I didn't, I'm still not in there. I'm still not in those kind of, those, those sort of games. Um, I mean, it's not Fortnite-esque, but obviously it it would be lumped in with like, it's your Fortnite, it's your Overwatch, it's your, you know, just like, yeah, your whatever type of games. They would be lumped in there. And I just... It's still not hitting me. What did I watch the other? There's some. I was scrolling through the store on the Switch, and there's some other game called Ninjala. Ninjala. Um, I think a buddy of mine is playing that. Yeah, it's free to play. Yeah. 
but it's it's like you know it's it's competitive it's competitive it's co- yeah competitive it's thing, yeah, competitive so battle royale okay combat stuff and it's like mm-hmm. eh, not not me apparently according to him the yo yo is broken in that game I just heard that it was I, I I heard that it was getting a lot of um, not publicity but a lot of people were, were like mm, it's yeah. a good game yeah. I was like, well, let me check it out. And I did. And I was like, that is not me, man. That is not for me. Mm-hmm. That is not my cup of tea. I was hoping it would be. Free to play. That'd be great. Just, you know, put another game on the Switch or something. And, hey, that's nice. A little mm-hmm. break. But, nah, not me. Yeah. Not for me. Uh, by the way, that whole rule of, like, single-player games and waiting for prices to drop uh, to get them and holding off on buying them until later does not apply to Nintendo. No, it doesn't, yeah. They don't lower their prices to save anything. It's they, very rare that you get a price drop mm-hmm. on on Nintendo games. Um, sad. But anyway. Yeah, that's how they do business. Back to Ubisoft. Watch Dogs Legion, Hyperscape. Some mobile game called Tom Clancy Elite Force or something like that. Um, which it pulls in like Rainbow Six and whatever Sam Fisher and that sort of which he was in there for Splinter Cell and I'm like you, God I hate you people I hate you <laughs> I hate you Ubisoft <laughs> you keep doing this keep doing it and now you're not even teasing it now it's just like oh yeah we put we we're still working with the property we put him in Ghost Recon I don't want to play Ghost Recon I want to play Splinter Cell well we put him in this new mobile game I don't want him in this mobile game. Mm-hmm. Put him in a full I want size him in a game. Sim. I want Put him, him in a full size like, Splinter Cell. I want him in a Splinter game. Cell. I don't understand it. I'm <laughs> mad. No. It's been years. It's mm. been 84 years since I've do, played Splinter Cell. Do they feel there's no demand for it? I don't know what they. I don't know. I have no idea. I really don't. Well, I think. No, no, no. I do. What I think that either they're not doing or that they're trying to do or that they're working on doing is to making it a games-as-service type thing. Some way to incorporate it so that they can make more money on just... that goes beyond the selling of the title. Yeah. That's what I think they are looking to possibly do, mm-hmm. um, or they want to do, is to put them into something to where it's like, hey, but can you buy these upgrades? Can you buy these loot crates? Can you buy these, you know gun packs or skin packs, you know, all this different stuff to kind of monetize the game beyond just buying the game. Yeah, Valorant comes to mind. Uh, well, and that's that's Amazon. But look at look at any Ubisoft game that's out now. I mean, yeah. Ghost Recon, uh, the Breakpoint, the other one, I think there's things you and I'd have to ask Matt. He hasn't played in a while, but I'd have to ask him. But I think there's ways to monetize that game. For Honor has ways of monetizing the game. Mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed has the helix points and things. You don't ever have to buy any of this stuff, but it's there. Um, gear out the wazoo as far as Assassin's Creed is concerned, where you can just buy different things. I don't think there's a lot of that to be done with in Splinter Cell. I think that's the problem. I think they want to find a way to do that. Oh, we also got Far Cry 6. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the kind of a announcement trailer, no gameplay that I remember, uh, but it's Far Cry, whatever. So, and I haven't played a Far Cry game to see how they monetize that. That may just be a franchise that has that found its stride and was like, okay, that's the one we're going with. You know, and give us another Far Cry, give us another mm-hmm. Watch Dogs, give us another Assassin's Creed. Mm-hmm. You know, those are our heavy hitters. Um, if you want to work on a Tom Clancy game, put out another level for Rainbow Six Siege. You know, put out some DLC for Division. Um, and Division is another game that they can create where it makes money outside of the initial purchase. Mm-hmm. So, and I don't, I just don't think you have that with Splinter Cell yet. Now they maybe they're working on trying to do that. I don't I don't know. I really don't know. I've heard nothing. I've heard nothing. I've no, I've heard nor I've heard not a rumor. I've heard not a job listing. I've heard nothing that indicates that they are working on a Splinter Cell game. Mm. They have the rights to the property, which they're always going to. It's Tom Clancy. They own that. Um, they're just not doing anything with it aside from these little cameo appearances in other games. And it's like, all right, that's but that is not my cup of tea. I'm glad to see that you still remember you have the property. But give me a game where I can do that. Yeah. Give me a game where I can play your character. But mm, I just don't want to do that. 
Um, I've missed a lot of stuff here. What do we got? Uh, I want to try Hyperscape Open Beta, but the game won't load. It keeps crashing. Series X needs to launch in September. Uh, if it launches in the usual November slot, Halo is going to be destroyed by Cyberpunk since Xbox seems to be overly reliant on Halo yet again. Setting up to die would be a bad decision. Retro says, with the ties Xbox seems to have with Assassin's Creed, it wouldn't surprise me if Xbox launch day coincides with uh, AC launch. Lethal Migrant says, if the rumor of the initiative making a perfect dark reboot ends up being true, Scott, you'll get yourself a new Splinter Cell just with Joanna Dark instead. I, I, I would say that I'm okay with that. Um, I have Perfect Dark <laughs> from when it from when it was a launch title on the 360 way back when. Mm-hmm. Uh, I never played it though, um, so I don't know. I mean, if that's your if that's a if that's a, if it's kind of like the relationship as um, Tomb Raider is to Uncharted as Splinter Cell is to Perfect Dark, then I'm on board. You know, um, I'm fine with that. Lethal Migraine. Let's talk about Far Cry 6 and what Ubisoft said on their Twitter yesterday. PS5 gets a 1080p version of Far Cry 6. Series X gets a 4K ultra high def version of the game. The difference, PS5 isn't power enough to handle the ray tracing Ubisoft wants to put in that game. You know what? It's fine to have differences in whatever. That's totally fine, Lethal Migraine. It's perfectly fine. Um, Some people don't care about Far Cry 6. And they'll want to get something else that it doesn't matter to them. Some people don't care about Xbox. Some people don't care about PlayStation. They're going to go with the system of choice. Um, we haven't heard prices yet on this thing, on, on these systems. Um, if PS5 comes in lower, then people are going to want to buy that just because, hey, this is more affordable than shelling out the bucks for the Series X. I have no idea. I really don't. I'm not ready to... to y- y- your claim and... and Please link me to the story where I can read on that. Uh, because I totally believe that you're exactly right in that it can't. Um, on paper and everything else, the PS5 does not match the power of the Xbox Series X. It doesn't. That's, we know this. Mm-hmm. Um, do games take advantage of it? I have no idea. That I haven't seen specs on some of these multi-platform titles. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of games are talking, a lot of the studios at least have been talking about their exclusives. Sony's like, here's what we're getting, here's what we're getting, um, whenever they talk about them. But I haven't heard many discussions on some of these multi platform games coming to these uh, other systems to know what the difference is. What's the difference in Cyberpunk 2077 on, on PlayStation 5 than what is on Xbox One? I don't even know if it's going to be on, X- on PlayStation 5, Cyberpunk. I'm not sure. But I don't know. Um, and it's fine. I, I'm, I get what, exactly what you're saying. Um, I'm, I'm still sitting on. I'm still sitting on a price point, waiting on a price point, which apparently we're not getting with this Xbox thing. On on was it Thursday? When's the twenty third? Thursday. Hmm. We're getting we're getting an Xbox about an hour long of nothing but games, but we've already been told that we will not get a look at the system or a deep dive into the system. Anyway, we'll probably get some visuals of it, but we won't get pre-order announcements. We won't get release date. We won't get price Mm. on the system. We're going to get games. Here's what games are coming. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 says, uh, scheduled for release on PS4, windows, Xbox one, uh, November, uh, stadia by the end of the year and PS five and Xbox series X in 2021. Okay. Yeah, and I don't know the differences in between the two. I don't know, you know, here's here's what you'll get with the Xbox version, here's what you get with the PS5 version. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. I'm also not kind of putting myself in that headspace because I'm playing on PC. Yeah. I'm not going to play it on the system. So, you know, um, but I'll definitely look. I'll definitely take a look and see because I'm curious just as much as anybody else. Are the games that can utilize... Again, on paper, they are more powerful. The mm-hmm. Xbox is better than the, the PS5 on paper. Yeah. But what... Can you use what you got to get what you do want? Do the games utilize it? Yeah. Especially when you talk third party. First party games? I'm sure. First party games are definitely going to take advantage of everything they have to offer. I, I almost am positive. But when you're developing a game for multiple systems, you don't normally put an extra effort into the ones that... You normally make it 
good enough to run on the consoles. Mm-hmm. You know, here's the build for PS5, and it's exactly the same build as Xbox One uh, or the Xbox. If the Xbox can output, it can pull out more for it, that sort of thing, you'll get that. Um, or if the PS5 can do something else different with that, you'll get that. But I'm just curious of the differences. Um, yeah, and see, that's what Lethal Migrant says. I think it's odd that Ubisoft would go that route instead of making the game the same on both next-gen consoles. You're exactly right. Normally, they go, not necessarily, I don't want to say least common denominator on this, but cheap route, you know what I'm saying? Normally, they're like, hey, it's going to cost more for us to uh, make a build for the Xbox for one console and then another console and that sort of thing. Let's just make the one build and we don't have to worry about it. Um and it doesn't increase our cost or something like that. So, I, and I, again, I say that without ever being a developer of a video game at all. <laughs> um, so I'm not necessarily sure that that's exactly true, but I think it is. So that's a good question, Lethal Migraine. Uh, what else do we have? There's, there's like, oh God, we have to take a break. Just to get back on time, we have to take a break. This comes from a game called Phantom Brave, which I'm fine with this. Um, I should have looked at how the songs are going to match up because I really wanted to play what song we're going to... Maybe it's the song we come back into. Maybe it's the song we... There's a, there's a game that has a fantastic soundtrack. And I'll tell you about that whenever, we, whenever it comes up in the rotation. But <laughs> it's not this one. This is Phantom Brave. It's called The Grand March. It's a march. I hadn't used it before. I was like, here, fine. I need a song. So this is what you're getting. We'll be back with more in-game chat after this. Welcome back to In Game Chat. Well, this is not the track I was saying that has a great sound. This comes from a game called Jewel Master hmm. on the Sega. Jewel Master. I have no idea. I saw it, heard it, and I was like, okay, that'll work. 1991, maybe? I wonder if that is any relation to uh, Columns. Columns? Yeah, I know. That's what I was yeah. thinking. You looking it up nope. now? Hmm. It's like a side scrolling adventure. Okay. Uh, hmm. Jewel Master. Let's see. Customizing your attacks through the use of uh, equipping rings. Uh, using the A and B buttons as a left and right hand, you can then equip two rings to the score- corresponding hand. Huh. So, yeah, side scrolling adventure. Um. Yeah, anyway, so that means the next track that we're going to be playing as we go out is the one that I was, um, somebody was playing it um, last night, or it was in their activity feed that they had been playing it, Mm -hmm. and it was a game called Unrailed, Hmm. and 
so I look up Unrailed Soundtrack, and I find the soundtrack. And unfortunately, it's not, it's not separated into different parts. It's like a 45-minute soundtrack all on one video for YouTube. Mm-hmm. And so I just downloaded the whole thing and just said, okay, I'll find a track out of here. Because I like the opening track, and I was like, okay, let's see what else is on here. It's like 45 minutes of music to, to you know, select through. Mm-hmm. And so I'd, I'd find the gap in between, and I'd say, okay, well, there's where, there's where the next track starts. Let's listen to that. Ooh, that's a good one. And, so, and, and the problem is, is that every single one I kept going to, I was like, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's another good one. I mean, it's fantastic. Fantastic soundtrack for this, uh, for this game called Unrailed. Um, and it's not thematic heavy where it's like it's not using the same themes over and over with with each track. Each mm-hmm. track seems to be its own composition of something completely differently sounding. With, with some exception, it shares a little bit of... Uh, of of a uh, of uh, like a drum beat or a certain like tempo, mm-hmm. but each track was just like this is really good. The melody was fantastic on each of them, and it was I just I was it was great. I could have picked any of them, mm-hmm. and so I went with whatever we're gonna play when we go out here. Um, but I, I just really good, really good. So I, I was hoping that would come up where I would have more time to talk about it than before we exit the show. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to get that in before we do exit the show. Uh, what do we got in there? We talked about Ubisoft. Flight Simulator comes out August 18th on 10 discs. 10 discs. Man, when was the last time you had multi-discs for a game? Uh, been a while. Been a while. Which I don't understand because wouldn't, normally now it's like a down, I bought Destiny on PC physical. Yeah. Destiny 2 on PC physical. Um... Why did I do that? Collectability? No. There's no way I did that for collectability. Why did I do that? Is that how I got the game on PC? That may be how I got the game on PC. Um, and I don't know why I did this. <laughs> anyway. I think, it was on a, I think it was on a sale or something. I get it mm-hmm. much cheaper than I could buying it online. or Because it was a Best Buy when I bought it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you open up the... the case and there's a little paper cut cd in there i mean it's paper Mm -hmm. it's like here's your download code that's it no physical item whatsoever Mm -hmm. so this being 10 discs when really you just need a download code now i I, there's a breakdown of it let's see let me see here because i'm curious about that comes on 10 discs blah 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 have been hired by Microsoft to, visit, to distribute physical copies of the game in Europe. Okay, that's Europe. So what's taking up all that space? The box edition content contains the simulator code itself, the sim that is around uh, pretty small in size. It's a mandatory part of the sim. The world and aircraft delivered by Microsoft, the con- that content depends on the version of the content. It's around 90 gigs. It's a mandatory part of the sim. Optional air, optional online streamed content. This is an optional part of the sim. Of the sim. And then third-party files, which is clearly fully optional. Our DVDs contains all of Part 2, apart from the updates Microsoft and uh, do between the moment the DVDs are pressed and released. When you install, the sim will update all files immediately from the servers, and you'll get the very latest code for the simulator itself, and all content is updated. This is very much a simulator that depends on the cloud if you want to use it to its full potential. So the boxed version makes it possible for people on a slower internet connection to get the sim installed without downloading the content. Mm. So the simulator is in every way 100% the same. The boxed retail version just gets you a nice box, printed manual, and about 90 gigs you do not have to download. There's no difference between boxed retail and the version that Microsoft sells directly. So there you go. I'm really excited for Flight Flight Simulator. I really, really am. Uh, it's going to look like crap on my PC right now, mm-hmm. but I'm hoping it'll look better when I when I do my upgrade later. Um, I think of Flight Simulator. I keep thinking about that guy who made his uh, flight tower videos. And people yeah, trying, yeah, you know, yeah. People trying no, to come in and land great. properly. That was it great. Was, it's right up there with the uh, uh, Kerbal Space Program yeah. in terms of the mishaps that happen out there. I love my flight simulators, man. The last one I played was Microsoft Flight Simulator. Was it X? No, it wasn't X. It was um, 
100 Years of Flight edition, whatever it was. Mm. And, man, I had a great time with that. Downloading different models of planes and stuff like that and just flying. Just, mm-hmm. you know, sh- take off, vroom, go. Now, all types of planes in there? Uh, all types of planes. Passenger planes, fighter planes. All types military, of planes. All, you know, yeah. okay. all types of planes, man. Mm-hmm. And you could download, people could mod stuff and you could download mm-hmm. planes. Like I downloaded... Um, Oh, what was it? It was like an SR-71. Mm-hmm. Blackbird? Yeah. Okay. Um, but it was the one from that movie with Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Firefox? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I downloaded that one. You could download um, the Sea Duck. Oh, okay. From Tailspin? <laughs> Tailspin, yeah. yeah. You could download the Sea Duck. You mm-hmm. download... Yeah, exactly. Mostly planes. It's, it's flight simulator, but it's all planes. I don't think, you, I don't yeah. think there's helicopters in there. No. I don't think there's ha- helicopters or hang gliders or, or blimps or or anything or hot air balloon. It's mm-hmm. just it's all it's all planes. So you got an osprey in there, so yeah, that's my close. To, I guess that's close you can get get to. Yeah. Oh look, dude, Frickham showed up in the chat room there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, good to see him back. By the way, uh, what else do we have? Lego is making a uh, Nintendo Entertainment System and a retro TV. And it's all built on Lego, but it retails for like three hundred, two hundred fifty, or three hundred dollars. Mm. Um, I'm I'm partial to the space stuff that they do. Mm. I, I looked at this, and it looks look, it looks real cute. Okay, it does. Mm-hmm. But I just don't. I don't know. There's not that whole situation of like, yeah, man, I want that. It's like I have a Saturn V rocket. And the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of other things from the space thing that you can have. You can have this whole thing of, like, you're in space. You know, these are are some really good-looking, I don't want to say replicas, but, you know, built out of Lego. You build it first, and then you display it, and it's real nice-looking. You can have Mm -hmm. this whole, I don't want to say scene, but this whole section of, like, space Legos. Here you Mm -hmm. go. The Nintendo thing is, like I said, it's cute and everything. I, I, I might get it just for just to build the system mm-hmm. and the cartridge, mm-hmm. not really the retro TV that goes with it, but just to have a Lego Nintendo system that would be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, you got to pay. And if they ever do the set, if they ever say, uh, you know, we'll sell them separate. Mm-hmm. You know, you can get with or without TV type thing. Then, then that's something I would look at. But as it is now, I'm like, nah, not really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I spent 250 back in Christmas for the Batmobile from the 89 film mm-hmm. in Lego Virgin, and version. And, um, yeah, I still haven't built that, <laughs> but I like it. Um, let's see. What else do we have? Google Stadia is getting 20 new games, including five exclusives. I don't think anybody cares about Stadia anymore, but good for them. Um What else? Henry Cavill's... uh, No Man's Sky added a million players since Xbox Game Pass debut. Plus, they've got the Desolation update, uh, which lets you explore, like, haunted space stations and stuff. Hmm. Uh, Curious about that. Tiny Build bought the Hello Neighbor developers. Well, I'm surprised you hadn't done that sooner. I would have thought that you already did. I would have thought you already owned those developers, but yeah. Yeah. For as much as you you lean heavy on that franchise, um, Destiny Two got delayed. We talked about that. Mm-hmm. Microsoft has officially discontinued Xbox One X and Xbox One S all digital edition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're not making those anymore. The all digital edition, though, that means they're still making the one that have discs, right? That you can put discs in. They're just discontinuing the ones that are just digital I yes, guess I imagine so yeah yeah um, yeah Duke Frukum's like No Man's Sky is that the best story in game and the launch was atrocious and they built it back over the years they sure did uh, I, I give them that No Man's Sky went through uh, the, it's like that line from um, Shawshank mm-hmm. crawled through a river of eh, and, stuff and came out uh, came out clean on the other side. Mm-hmm. You know? It's exactly what they did. 
They, they crawled through a massive, horrible PR campaign, release, launch, everything was mm-hmm. bad, bad. And I really didn't think they were going to recover from that. I really thought, no, nah, we're just going to go into hiding and work on something else. Mm-hmm. You know, we're doing, we'll make something else, we'll release that, and people can forget about this No Man's Sky business. No, they stuck to their guns, they kept building on it and building on it and improving it and working towards something, and I haven't played it. But by all accounts from everybody who has, yeah, they redeemed themselves. They really, really did. Mm. And hopefully they learned a lesson where it's like, yeah, we really shouldn't, uh, we, should, we really shouldn't run the hype train like we did mm-hmm. uh, on, that, on that game. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. It was bad, Duke. It was, uh, it was all around bad. Uh, Paper Mario developer discusses why you don't see original characters uh, anymore. Apparently, they are they are locked. They are not allowed. Um, if you've read our review, you'll know the game makes several tentative steps back towards its RPG roots, though it ultimately shies away from the series' old companion system, blah, blah, blah. Recently, it's been a while since we've had truly individual companions in a Paper Mario game. The kind fans still remember fondly from the Thousand Year Door. Um... Each of these companions, since the, uh, the series has moved away, in an interview, Nintendo producer commented on how this shift is impacted. Since Paper Mario Sticker Star, it's no longer possible to modify Mario characters or to create original characters that touch on the Mario universe. That means that if we aren't using Mario characters for bosses, we need to concentrate, or we need to create original characters with designs that don't involve the Mario universe at all, like we've done with. Uh, Ollie and the stationary bosses. Um, aside from wanting us to change the atmosphere a lot, there were two main things that Miyamoto said from the start of the project. It's fine without a story, so do we really need one? And, as much as possible, complete it with only characters from the Super Mario world. Um, so, interesting. How they would... I, I, Nintendo is very protective of its brand. Very, very protective of its brand. In fact, little little thing, I've used this on Random Facts before, and I think I've talked about it here. There are two adult films <laughs> that are based on the Mario thing, but, mm-hmm. you know, basically that are adult. Yeah, parody. Um, that Nintendo bought the rights to mm-hmm. so that they could hold those and not... They're like, eh, we bought the rights to those things. Um, and and so, that, so that they can't get out, so that they locked away. So nobody can do anything with them. Mm-hmm. So um, they're very, very highly protective of their brand. Um, and it's fine. They're more than welcome to be. Uh, GameStop will require all customers to wear face masks, but employees cannot enforce that. Uh, they, they may not, maybe they can't. It doesn't necessarily matter because uh, I know a lot of states are going towards the state mandate of wearing masks. So it doesn't necessarily matter. Mm-hmm. Um, on those states that don't have those mandates where the, the states or the cities say that, you know, it doesn't matter if you wear a mask or not, you'll have to wear one apparently when you go into GameStop. Um, which I think now is like you have to do that when you go into a Best Buy, you have to do that when you go into a Walmart. Uh, Pretty much everywhere. Uh, almost, almost, all, almost all stores are saying, look, if you're going to come down to our store, you got to wear a mask. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Wear it. It's fine. I, I, I'm totally fine with wearing a mask. I've worn it before. It doesn't bother me. Um, you know, if you plan, if you plan what you're going to buy, just go in there, get your stuff, yeah. get out. Um, you're done. It's fine. Uh, it's I, I would say wearing it outside sucks. I will tell you that. Mm. It's horrible in this heat. Can't stand it. Um, my experience of the mask thing is probably different than yours because I don't really venture out very much. <laughs> I try, in fact, I try to venture out as little as possible, um, mainly because of the heat, mm. especially in the summer. So whatever, it's mask, it's fine. Um, what else do we have here? Last of Us Part Two is not only 2020's biggest launch to date; it's also Sony's second biggest launch ever, right behind. Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Spider-Man is their first biggest launch, and Last of Us Part Two is the second biggest launch for Sony. And then Xbox Live Gold killed off their yearly subscription option. This was interesting, and it just happened, or at least it j- I just noticed it today. 
Um, the If you want Xbox Live Gold, which this is not the same as Game Pass, but if you want Xbox Live Gold, which allows you to play multiplayer games on Xbox, right. on Xbox mm-hmm. uh, the yearly subscription is now gone. You have to buy a three-month or a six-month yeah. subscription. Yeah. Um, one month is 10 bucks. three months is 25 Right. Uh, one month, a three-month, or I think a six-month subscription. Yeah. Is there a six-month subscription? I didn't see six months. I saw three months. You, you could be right. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. There's only there's only a monthly and a three month. You're right. Yeah. Which that makes the the price of it go up a little bit if you buy it a month to month or three months. You know, yeah. Every three a months year would thing. be a year is a hundred bucks now. Which, which was slight, it before ninety? Thought it was sixty. Nah, I thought it was. I thought they increased. I, I thought know. they raised their price. You know, I just had the article open. I should have kept it. Okay. Open. Yeah. It was but, but, but higher now, anyway. Uh, well, the 12 months, these were 60. Yeah, you're right. Okay, these were right. available for 60, while month long plans are 10 and three months are 25. Because of this, it will apparently cost around 100 bucks to get a year of Xbox Live Gold, which is just slightly less than a Game Pass Ultimate subscription, which gets you a year of Xbox Live Gold with a year of Xbox Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Um,. Part of me feels like this is some, has something to do with, I guess, what, they're, what they've got coming up for um, the 23rd this week. Mm-hmm. If they're going to announce, like, here's, here's the way it works now if you want to get an Xbox Live or an Xbox Gold subscription or Game Pass subscription, whatever. Mm-hmm. I feel like they've got something planned for that. Mm-hmm. Um, or they're just pushing people more to do the Game Pass Ultimate thing, which, honestly, it's a really great deal. It gets you that, plus it gets you a bunch of games to play. Um, but I can't see them like going strictly for that, you know, mm-hmm. I, and I don't know why, I guess, because they've been doing it separate forever. How long now? I don't see why they would say, well, now we're going to bundle it. So you have, you now yeah. have to, there is no option for you to have multiplayer on your system without getting this Xbox game pass thing with it, yeah. which if that's the case, that's the case It's for, a year, for a year anyway, unless you want to true or you got to do the, or you got to do the, you got to do the, um, yeah, I don't know. It's it just it seems a little odd, but it also seems like eh, maybe they're prepping for something. I don't know. I just see money grab. Maybe sixty bucks. Now it's a hundred, or Lisa, not, what ninety something with a uh, game pass. Yeah, at least the migrant says. My guess is now that Xbox has built out all their cloud gaming data centers, they got rid of yearly because there's a real chance live will be going free. Uh, that's a good question. See, that's yeah. See, I, like I said, I think they've got something up there. And I was thinking maybe they got. Um, different price tiers up their sleeve but maybe they are going free with it there is i remember reading a rumor about that that um it's a possibility that they go free with their online component Mm -hmm. with with their xbox live thing they might go free with it um we'll see i'm curious we'll find out uh getting it allows for multiplayer then huh it is worth it if it allows for multiplayer then yeah, it was weird. I remember this is really the gist of what I get PS uh, PS Plus for, and the games are nice and all, but it's required for multiplayer. A lot of multiplayer and a lot so of things, which like is that. exactly what Xbox Live does. It's required yeah. for multiplayer. So. Which was I remember that being weird whenever it came around because it's like we well, don't you know, P- being pre- predominantly PC players or at least the circle of friends I had at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't pay for our we don't pay for our online play on PC. Yeah. That seems rather absurd. <clears throat> um, oh, man. Coffee went up my nose. Which is weird. I swallowed, but it went up my nose. <clears throat> Go figure. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Um, Lethal Migrant says, Ultimate gets you Game Pass on PC and console, and starting September gets you xCloud 2. Plus, they recently added Ultimate perks uh, as well. Yeah, I have Ultimate. There was this deal way back when, and it got me like a full year of it for, it was last year, I think, and it got me two full years of the thing for, I don't know, $150 mm-hmm. for two full years of the service, and it was it was, it was, was a massive win on that one. So Anyway, we're going to go so I can let this song play because it's a really good song. Um, I say it's a really good track, not really a song. Uh, but thanks, everybody, for joining us in the chat room. Is everybody listening on the stream as well, even on the radio? We appreciate it. Thanks to everybody who grabs us each week from iTunes or however you get our show for later use. We do appreciate it. Go to ingamechat.net. 
Join us on Twitter, Facebook, our YouTube channel. Uh, if you're on Steam, we've got a Steam group over there. Join up with us, play games with us and other listeners. Also, uh, Discord, we're over there. We're all over Discord. I don't know, we're everywhere. Ingamechat.net is really where you need to be. Thanks, everybody. Have a fantastic week. We will see you next Saturday. Music from a game called Unrailed. Bye. Thank you.